this video is an overview of the 49 pin lock processes to help you prepare for the PMP and CAPM exams. But before I get started, let me mention if you're interested, we've got lots of free PMP and CAPM prep materials at projectprep.org, and a few of them are really relevant to what we're going to talk about in this video. We've got a process reference and an ITTO spreadsheet, note cards, and blank sheets to help you prepare. Now, there's three topics I'm going to cover in this video. The first is just an overview of processes. The second is uh, I'll talk about the 49 PMBOK processes in detail and then give you some process tips to help you remember them. Okay, so first, what is a process? Now, in the PMBOK guide, what we use to study for the PMP and CAPM exams, there's 49 processes. And these are the things that we do in project management. Some example processes are listed here. Develop schedule, estimate costs, define scope, acquire resources, and so on. These are the things that we do in project management. And each of those 49 processes has ITTOs, inputs, tools, and techniques, and outputs. Those ITTOs are kind of like the recipe for how we do project management. The ITTOs are actually covered in a different video. I'm going to focus on the processes here, though. So the processes are categorized into five process groups in 10 knowledge areas. So let me start with the uh, process groups first. So these are the five process groups, initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, controlling, and closing. So when we initiate a project, we're defining a new one and getting approval to start. And planning, we're establishing the scope or the work that we plan to do, and we're sort of planning the course of action, how we're going to get the work done. As we execute, we complete the work. As we monitor and control, we track and review progress to make sure things are going as planned. And in closing, we finalize all activities. So the 49 processes are categorized into one of these process groups and also one of these knowledge areas. So these are just different areas of project management. And in this video, as we walk through the 49 processes, we're gonna go through them by knowledge area. And here's just a high level overview of what, um, where all those 49 processes sit in the categories of process groups up on the top and knowledge areas on the left-hand side there. Now the process reference that we've got available at projectprep.org, this gives you something like this, but also gives you all the definitions to go along with them. Now, let me just stop right here. I can understand that there's a lot of processes that can be, it can be really overwhelming, but here's something you should know. Think about those processes as tools in a toolbox. Each one is a different tool. Now, remember that on every construction project, you don't need every tool necessarily. Um, and it's just the same way with project management. We don't necessarily need to use every process on every project. Uh, if we use the construction example, sometimes we need a hammer, other times we need a saw. So I was always concerned when I looked at these 49 processes, did I need to do everything on every project? Not really. We tailor it to identify which processes are appropriate for our project. So now let's talk about the 49 PMBOK processes in detail, and we're going to go by knowledge area. So we'll start with integration. Integration management is the bridge between the process groups. It sort of brings everything together. It's the glue, I like to think of it. Now we've got seven processes in this knowledge area. They're sort of a, a mix across the process groups. Uh, the develop project charter process, that's authorizing the project and providing the PM with authority to get started and use resources. Okay, then we've got developing the project management plan. The project management plan is a big plan and it combines all of these subsidiary plans. Examples are the cost management plan, quality, ma quality management plan, the scope management plan, all those things sort of get rolled up into the project management plan. And then we direct and manage project work. We perform the work of the project and implement approved changes. And then we manage project knowledge. We capture lessons learned and knowledge and use that for our current project and future projects. Then we monitor and control the project work. We track and report on progress to see how things are going. It's kind of like checking the health of the project. And then we perform integrated change control. We review and approve change requests and communicate the decisions to our stakeholders. And then at the end of the project, we close the project or phase, formally completing the work. Okay, the next knowledge area is scope management. Now in scoping, we're kind of defining what the project will do and what it won't do. We're sort of setting boundaries. And there's six processes in this knowledge area. Four are in planning and two in monitoring and controlling. So in plan scope management, we're documenting how scope will be defined and controlled. And then in collect requirements, we're documenting the needs of the stakeholders, seeing what they're looking for, or they're hoping the project will accomplish. And then we're defining scope, setting boundaries, developing a detailed project and product description. 
And then we're going to create the WBS. We're going to take that scope, that project or product description, and break it down into smaller pieces so it's easier to manage. WBS stands for the work breakdown structure. We're breaking down the work. And then we're going to validate scope, uh, seek formal acceptance on completed deliverables. And then we're going to control scope, monitoring the project scope and managing changes to the scope baseline. Okay, so now let's talk about schedule management. In scheduling, we're estimating and managing how long things are going to take. And we've got six processes here. Five are in planning and one's in monitoring and controlling. So with plan schedule management, we're documenting how the schedule will be developed and controlled. For example, what estimating methods are we going to use? And then we define activities. We actually take the work breakdown structure we talked about a minute ago and break it down even further into individual steps, the steps required to produce the project deliverables. And then we take those activities and sequence them. We put them in the right order. And then we estimate how long things are going to take, the durations of those activities. And we take all of those things that we produced and develop the schedule. We analyze activity sequences and estimates to create this uh, schedule baseline. And then we control the schedule over time. We monitor activities, see how, how things are going, and manage changes to the schedule baseline. Okay, now let's talk about the cost knowledge area, cost management. We're estimating how much we're going to need to get things done and when we're going to need that. And we've got just four processes here, three in planning and one in monitoring and controlling. So with plan cost management, we're documenting how to estimate and control costs. And also in this example, how we're going to, or what estimating methods we might use. We're estimating costs, approximating the finances we need to get it done. And we're going to go really by activities here, the cost for activities. And then we're going to determine the budget. We're going to take all of those costs from the activities, put them together, and use that to generate the cost baseline. And then we're going to control costs over time, monitor project costs, and manage, manage changes to the cost baseline. Okay, now let's talk about quality management. And we define quality as something serving its intended purpose and being free of defects. And in this quality management knowledge area, we have three processes, one in planning, one in executing, and one in monitoring and controlling. Now in plan quality management, we identify quality requirements and document how to comply with them. And then we manage quality, we convert that quality management plan into actionable quality activities, things we're gonna do to comply with our quality requirements. And then we control quality over time. We monitor the outcomes of, of activities and deliverables and see if uh, we're achieving the appropriate levels of quality. Now let's talk about resource management. That's acquiring and managing resources that includes labor and materials, both of those. And so we've got uh, six processes here, two in planning, three in executing, and one in monitoring and controlling. Okay, so in planning, we've got plan resource management, documenting how to estimate and acquire and manage project resources. We're gonna determine how to get what we need. And then we're gonna estimate the resources we need, the manpower, the materials, and the equipment, and then we're going to acquire those resources and actually get them. And then we're going to develop the team. This is labor specific, improving team skills in relation to improve their performance. And then we're going to manage the team, track their performance, provide them feedback and resolve issues. And then we control resources over time. We monitor plan versus actual resource usage. Okay, so now let's talk about communications management. We're sharing project information with stakeholders like a weekly status report with our sponsor. So we've got three processes here, one in planning, one in executing, and one in monitoring and controlling. So in plan communications management, we're developing a plan for communications based on the needs of the stakeholders. So what do they need? What type of information? When do they need it? That sort of thing. And then we manage communications. We create and distribute that information. And then we monitor communications over time to see if our stakeholders' needs are met. Okay, now let's talk about risk management. Now, risk is an uncertain event that if it occurs has a positive or negative effect on the project. It could be positive or negative. And positive effects, we call those opportunities. And negative effects, we call those threats. So here are the seven processes. Five are in planning, one in executing, and one in monitoring and controlling. So in plan risk management, we're defining how to conduct risk management on the project. How are we going to do that? Uh, what methods are we going to use? That sort of thing. And then we're going to identify risk, detecting risk that may affect our project. And we're going to document those in the risk register, which we're going to update as we go through this. And then we're going to perform qualitative risk analysis. We're going to prioritize risks based on their probability, the likelihood of them happening, and their impact. If they do happen, how bad will it be? 
And then after qualitative analysis, we're going to do some quantitative analysis, numerically analyzing the effect of risks on project objectives. And then we're going to plan risk responses. After we've identified and analyzed the risks, we're going to plan how we're going to respond. And then we're going to implement those risk responses in the executing process group. And then over time, we're going to monitor risks. So we'll track the existing ones and identify new ones over time. Okay, so now let's talk about procurement management. This is buying things that we need for the project from outside of our own team. And there's three processes here, one in planning, one in executing, and one in monitoring and controlling. So in planning procurement management, we're documenting the procurement method, identifying what we need from outside sellers and identifying potential sellers that could provide that. And then we're gonna conduct procurements, collect responses from sellers, choose one, and then award a contract. And then we're gonna control procurements over time, manage their relationships or these relationships and monitor the contract performance. So now let's talk about the final knowledge area, stakeholder engagement. And stakeholders are anyone who may be affected by the project. We really have to monitor these relationships because they could either help our project or hurt it. And we have four processes here, one in initiating, one in planning, one in executing, and one in monitoring and controlling. So with identify stakeholders, we're identifying and classifying those who could be affected by our project. And then we're going to plan stakeholder engagement, develop strategies for working with these stakeholders. And then we're going to manage that engagement, communicate with them, and address issues over time. And then monitor engagement. Monitor and adjust plans for engaging with them based on how things are going. Okay, now let me shift a little bit and talk about some tips for remembering the processes in which process groups they belong to. So as a reminder, we've got 49 processes, and this is how they're categorized by process group up at the top and by knowledge area on the left-hand side. Now here's five tips for remembering which process group these processes are in. The first tip is that initiating only has two processes, develop project charter and identify stakeholders. The second tip is that planning processes usually include things like plan, estimate, or define. Here's three examples, plan schedule management, estimate activity durations, and define activities. Usually whenever you see those words, that means it's a planning process. Here's the third tip. Executing processes usually include things like manage, conduct, or acquire. Examples are direct and manage project work, conduct procurements, acquire resources. When you see those key words, usually means an executing process. Here's the fourth tip. Monitoring controlling processes always, always include monitor, control, or validate. Uh, here's some examples. Control costs, validate scope, and monitor communications. If you see one of those key words, you know it's a monitoring controlling process. Here's the fifth tip. Closing only has one process. Close project or phase. As a final reminder, we've got several prep materials for the PMP and the CAPM over at projectprep.org. If you're interested, there's a few that are really relevant to what we just talked about. There's a process reference, an ITTO spreadsheet, note cards and blank sheets to help as you prepare.